Red Lanterns number 11, written by Peter Milligan, art by Miguel Sepulveda. Last issue was a pretty much just tie-in crossover with Stormwatch. Genuinely, don't really think it mattered much. So just jumping into this issue, we have a group of Green Lanterns making their way over to Yzmalt because Guy Gardner, you know, was talking about how he met a Red Lantern, and he's recounting that information. And as they arrive, they see that the planet is basically being completely destroyed. And they look around and they see, like, the ghost of a Red Lantern just, like, leave a handprint on one of the Green Lanterns. And they're like, okay, um, let's bail. And then they leave the planet. And that's it for the issue for them. So then we go to one of the main arcs, which is on Xamaron, a.k.a. the home of the Star Sapphires, where Blees and her compadres, her little group of Red Lanterns, are being held captive by Fatality of the Star Sapphires. All of these people we know from Green Lantern New Guardians. And basically Blees is like, you suck, Star Sapphires. And Fatality's like, we were on a team, Blees, I love you. And she's like, shove it. I hate you. So then we see that the one of the Red Lanterns, you know, he's corrupted by the poisoning. He starts falling apart, and he just literally dies right there with no one being able to save him. And then Fatality's like, oh, okay, you guys are actually, like, in trouble, trouble. Okay, um, I will promise you I will convert any female Red Lanterns that would like to be converted. And immediately one of them, I can't even remember his name, the orb-looking guy, he's like... What? We would never convert. Never in a minute. Wait, did you say only females? What kind of sex stuff is this? So, at this point, Blees is so pissed off that Fatality is, like, doing all this. She breaks out of her chains, and they just start a full-on fight. And Blees is like, oh, okay. See, so you, you, don't, you don't believe in hate and stuff like that, but you throw a mean left hook. I'm sure you don't have any rage in your heart, wink. And then... They get there's a point in here where they're inside of a crystal, which they clearly are not yet, but they will be later, which is very confusing to me. So they're inside of a crystal here, and Bleez manages to like scrape her own blood and mix it in with Fatality, and she's like, "Now we're blood sisters in rage, and you will all all of your inner rage thoughts will come to the surface because of my blood or whatever." Sure, whatever. So then we get over to Rancor, who's just waking up from being unconscious on a meteor. And he's like, what happened between last issue and now? Oh, right. We were attacked by the Star Sapphires as we came to their planet. And they, like, pretty much just destroyed us. Whoops. So then we see him, like, he's like, I gotta go. I gotta go fly, I gotta go find somebody. And as he looks out, there's this beautiful two-page spread of just a galaxy of stars. And he's like... I think I might be alone. Like, I don't... It's light years to the nearest star. I might never see anyone again until I die. That's a humbling thought. But anyway, then we go over to Atrocitus, who's been going through sector after sector to planet after planet, just looking for a business. He's been looking for two days, and we get, you know, a recap of business. He was built with a flaw. He could feel empathy, and then he was buried, and Atrocitus is pissed off that he broke his power battery. So then Scalix and Dexstar show back up to Atrocitus, and they're like, hey, we can't find him anywhere. To which point, the guy that he's interrogating, he's like, all right, screw this. I'm just going to use blood magic. So he slits open the throat of the guy he's interrogating and asks the universe via blood prophecy of, show me where Abysmus is. There's a little scene in between here that I'll get back to. But when we get back to Atrocitus, he essentially is like, come on, I'll throw in my own blood to sweeten the pot. And he puts in his own blood magic. And Scalx is like, uh, you're not looking so hot, boss. You may want to cool it with the blood magic. But finally he gets an image in there, and he's able to see himself being defeated and broken. To which point Abysmus, who's like standing right in front of him now at this point, is like, yep, and that's what's going to happen right now. So he, he starts, they get into a fight, and... Abysmus is ready to throw the first punch, but then, or sorry, Atrocitus is ready to throw the first punch. Abysmus just has some weird tendril things come out of his stomach, wrap up Atrocitus, and he's like, you you are the only family I've ever known. I love you, and now I will put you out of your misery. And that's technically the end of the issue, but I did skip over two pages here, where first and foremost, Blees and Fatality, they're talking, 
and then they're put into the crystal. That one from like two pages ago, specifically here, they're put into the crystal. And we see that they're talking and like, Blees is trying to convince Fatality, like, no, rage, that's what it's, that's what it's about. And Fatality's like, no, love is what it's about. And we see them just talking as they're fighting and they realize like both of them were raised to be someone they didn't want to be and they were both harmed in a lot of ways. And as such, like, Fatality's like, you're right, I do have rage. I do dream of getting my revenge on those people who wronged me. To which Blees is like, no, revenge isn't the answer, Fatality. Take it from me. So maybe they're having a heart-to-heart, -heart, but that's all we get of it on that page. Then we get Rancor, who's finally managed to make his way to a place and he's like oh i see bodies maybe it's it's red lanterns i'm sure they're all just sleeping he genuinely thinks they're just sleeping and as he comes up to one he sees it's just a corpse and how he's just basically in an asteroid field of nothing but red lantern corpses and he's like oh my fear turns to rage as i know i might be next and abysmus is the one responsible for all this death maybe this death will lead to him and he goes off to find a business, as we already know, is attacking Atrocitus. So, I genuinely think there was, like, a misnumbering of pages somewhere along the way there, because there's no, like, either that it's an art error of why were they in that crystal thing before they weren't, and then we had that reveal of, like, the blood magic or whatever. I think that that page with, like, the blood sisters from Blees was supposed to be after the whole revenge isn't the answer sort of thing but then it didn't make sense from that standpoint because why would Blee say revenge isn't the answer then just to turn right back and say do you feel rage in your heart like something in there wasn't making sense maybe i'm nitpicking here but like it genuinely felt disjointed of how we flowed from a to b to c when it felt like it should have been a to c to b so yeah i don't know that's just me um, the Atrocitus stuff is okay. I like his desperation of blood magic. He's just like, it's all I got. I'm just going to go for it. And everyone's like, dude, chill. Jesus. Um, the Rancor stuff's fine. The two-page spread, fantastic. But right now, it feels like they're just like, we had to have a human Red Lantern because humans are so special and readers have to relate. But we don't actually know what to do with them yet. So we'll get there. That's all it feels like right now. But overall, it's fine. It's an okay issue. I give it a, I'm going to give it a 6.5. It would be higher if it weren't for what I genuinely believe is that error between Blees and Fatality. I, I just want some form of confirmation on that. Anywhere at all. Just give me something. But uh, yeah, no, it's 6.5 and I'm still liking it. But it did feel very disjointed as an issue as a whole.